I always love to share the story of how I got into PR because he always lets me give credit to people who deserve the credit. Um, I didn't know Jack about PR. Don't forget that I was a writer. I, when I realized that my writing could not really, really pay the bills, I, I thought of a lot of things I could do with my skill. In fact, Julius Agu, God bless Julius, had advised me that, oh boy, when you live in Comium, don't go and do your own magazine. You know, that's, a, that's predictable. Just start doing books. You know, he does really, really like me. You know. Um, but you see, in my days before going to UI, UI in my YAFM days, I had befriended a couple of guys. One of them is a guy called Babadi. Babadi studied theater arts in UI. He was already on his way out when I went into UI. Then he had a show on MITV, very popular show. I've forgotten what it was called. Very nice guy, you know. So in promoting my shows and YAFM, Babadi would interview me on his show and give me promo. So on one night at MITV, he introduced me to his younger brother, a gentleman called Larry San Sultan, who had just put out his first track at the time. And if I was before YAFM, Babadi's request was see if he can perform at YAFM. So I formed a closer friendship with San Sultan than Babadi. Maybe we're closer in age and all of that, and, and you know. And um, yeah, so we remained in touch. They continued building their career. I continued building my own career. When they signed a contract with Kenny's Music, right, Babadi and Sans Otan wanted me to be their manager. I was looking for ways to make money. So they thought, you used to do art management before you went journalism. Maybe you can still do it by the side. So we went to meet with Keke at their office in Dolphin. And Keke didn't waste time before saying, guys, I know I earn very well. He shouldn't be your manager. It should be your publicist. Ayane, you write very well. You've empowered a lot of artists without even knowing that that's what you're doing. Your voice is strong. If you become a publicist, you can be, and I'll give you your first brief. Like I said, he just said it. Right? So, Keke, it was who first told me about what it meant to be a publicist. My curiosity, when I left that day, I couldn't sleep. So, I, I kept researching. And I liked, I'm like, okay, ah. I mean, this is what I do already, that I don't even get paid for. Yeah. Because the mother will want to drop a new song, she would chase me, I would sit in her car and listen to the song. She wants my view yeah. before it comes out. I went by road to go and go at the new album. I was already doing it, right? So I thought, okay, this is not bad. So, Sansa Tan Babadi said, okay, don't worry, that means you'll be a publicist. Keke said, don't worry, I will give you your first brief. Not up to a few weeks later, Two Face Idibia calls me up. Where you did, let's meet her. Do we talk? I want to see you. I get there, he's eating. He say, oh boy, and you know how two faces, you know? He wanted me to be his publicist. He didn't know how to express it. So within a month or two, I have three clients who just wanted me to advise them on how to navigate the, the Nigerian media and to work my media contacts to help them. That's it. This was 2000 and... Did you know there was a thing called... Pub Publicist. I've never heard of it before. Why am I here now? <laughs> I've never heard of it before. So, so we had a conversation. <laughs> uh, a friend of mine walked up to me and she I was telling me that she has this dream, something she wants to do. And I'm like, I'm listening. And she's trying to break it down. She's trying to break it down. Yeah. You know, you know how so so during events, you know, something so there's has to be somewhere where, you know, like artists, you know, uh, artist welfare yeah. or you know, whatever. And then I said, um, I said uh, that's a green, green room. room. Yeah. And she yeah. You have a name yeah, for it. Yeah, that's it. That's it. So, so I, I didn't know what it was. I know Chuck about it. Keke sowed the seed, and I was fortunate enough to take it and yeah, own it. And Keke, it. even though our business relationship was not structured and formal, exposed me to everything I needed to be exposed to. Gave me insight, gave me intel, took me overseas, gave me money from time to time, and you know, and made sure that he was available to me. He was very, and I'm saying. Wow. This was at the point when Keke was it. I mean, prime time, Kenny's was as big as Google. So he was not some struggling music entrepreneur. No, uh, he was yeah, the big deal, yeah, you God. know. So, yeah, yeah, God. yeah. It was, so, so between Sans Otan and Babadi and Keke, I was saying. And once I agreed with Two Face that evening at Do It All, and people got word that INE is now trying to be a. This was 2006. I left my job a few months later. That INE was not trying to do it. My phone never stopped ringing. I never had to go and beg one person. Every Word MC, Queen, or No Color, everybody, there, there's no single person that, that we way. worked with that way. In fact, Tony and Womi just like Keke, liked me, would invite me to their house, 
you, you don't leave their house without an envelope. It will give you something for your transportation. They will, you know, demonstrating that you believe in me from where I was coming from of such self doubt is more than a billion naira. Yeah. So to that, everybody, Bilabaja, I will go and sit with Bilabaja for an interview. We'll be done in one hour. He will spend 30 minutes advising me. You write so well. Why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? Why don't you do that? It, it became a client. So, so suddenly, from 2006 okay, yeah. to 2009, I found myself being able to build a business uh, for the first time around my writing skill. I thought it was big. I thought, wow. And then three friends kept saying to me, Diola Atalade, Fumi Victor Okibo, and Kevin Rifa kept saying, you are so good, but the way you name your company, there's no money in it. Why don't you do corporate? Corporate, we've, we found corporate very boring. Now, I don't want to work for brands and all of that, you know. But 2009, I listened to talk about what you think is responsible for BHM's growth. I stubbornly listened to those three people. And if I, I work with one of them to land on the name Black House Media. And we rebranded from AYANI to Black House Media. We stopped calling ourselves publicists. We are now PR consultants and all of that. And all the corporate brands started calling. Tokini Peter Side called from NSC. They wanted to work. Uh, and, and, you know, once people saw that you are working for NSC, you know, Viacom. And I was a stubborn journalist. Viacom had written a lot of articles about MTV based when they came into Nigeria and, and all of that. And I remember Alex asking me, the irony, you've dealt with us. Are you sure you are? I say, Oga, I was a journalist in that life. And I was professional. In this yeah. life, I was professional. I got the business on the phone. Yeah. Ali, Alison Reed, Samoye Melikwe, and Alex, they were professional, very supportive. So, so my background in media, my background as a writer, my my approach, also because I didn't study public relations traditionally. So I think the same thing that worked for my success in journalism where I didn't study media and commerce communications. I just learned writing and I was writing my way. And people liked the same thing with PR. People just liked our approach to PR and the clients really loved to work with us. Once I realized, and this is something I probably never said before. Once I realized that from going to bed hungry at night with no food on my table, from taking a, an 11,000 naira loan to rent my first house in Akute, that wait, so it means I can now dream this thing and it can be possible. Me too. I cannot buy a Tokumbo car, you know. I can also do this. Ah, uh, NSC, I'm sitting in NSC's boardroom and we're having a meeting and I'm asking to pay and the Jamboree's called us in 2013. I'm like, okay, so now, nothing stops. So the dreams I'm dreaming now, the growth that you see now is a function of us now dreaming and say, wait, where we actually are is actually impossible. For us to be here today, it means we can be anywhere that we dream to be. And were we to fail at it, well, too bad. We really haven't lost anything, you know. So that's what's driving our growth. We want to become the first global communications company from Africa.